Hello, this is Terry Bradshaw, Research Specialist at the University of Vermont. In the second part of this presentation, I will discuss horticultural performance of the five apple cultivars, Ginger Gold, Honeycrisp, Liberty, Macowan, and Zestar. These cultivars were planted in a new orchard in 2006 in South Burlington, Vermont as part of the Organica project. Data in this presentation comes from the growing seasons 2009 through 2011. Trunk cross-sectional area was a standard measurement of tree size that was assessed at the end of each growing season. From 2006 through 2008, trunk cross-sectional area was not statistically different for any cultivars. However, in 2009, Honeycrisp attained a larger trunk cross-sectional area than Zestar, and in 2010, Honeycrisp trees had a greater trunk cross-sectional area than all other cultivars except Ginger Gold. Trunk cross-sectional area is an important measurement used in comparing relatively relative yield between different trees. It is also a standard measurement that measures relative tree growth in a fairly simple way. It is important to note that Honeycrisp, due to its inherently lower vigor, was grafted onto a slightly more vigorous rootstock, Malling 26, than the fully dwarf Budagowski 9 rootstock that the other four varieties were grafted onto. Other measurements of tree growth include canopy height and width, and the length of the current season's vegetative terminals for each tree. For Orchard 1, at the end of the study period in fall 2001, we can see that ginger gold trees had greater height, width, and terminal length than the other cultivars. Liberty trees were shorter in height than all cultivars, and shoot length was less than ginger gold, but did not separate statistically from Honeycrisp Macallan or Zestar. In each spring, the relative blossom density was rated on a 0 to 5 scale, where 0 equals no blossoms on the tree, and 5 equals greater than 90% of spurs with blossoms. We can note that there was no hand thinning performed in 2009 or 2010 on this crop. The lack of hand thinning could lead to biennial bloom conditions and may be a reason for the depressed bloom in 2010. Looking at this data, we can see that Ginger Gold, Liberty, and Macallan had very good bloom rating in 2009 and 2011, although they both appear to be, all three appear to be depressed in 2010. Zestar was less affected in 2010 by the lack of hand thinning, and therefore the bloom rating has been consistently good across all three years. Honeycrisp, on the other hand, has consistently had the lowest bloom rating of all five cultivars in the orchard. Fruit yield in 2011 was low by commercial standards for an orchard of this age. Ginger Gold and Honeycrisp had the highest yield in number of fruit, kilograms of marketable yield, and marketable yield efficiency. Yield efficiency is calculated by dividing the weight of the crop by the trunk cross-sectional cross area of each tree to standardize yield measurements across trees of different size. While it was not analyzed statistically, the mean fruit yield in bushels per acre can give growers insight on the relative performance of the cultivars. In 2011, Ginger Gold and Honeycrisp produced 185 and 222 bushels per acre respectively, but Zestar only 91. Note, this is only a single year of data. We can also see that Liberty had a high pre-harvest drop, significantly higher than all other cultivars in the block. When we look at marketable yield efficiency across the three years of the study, Ginger Gold has been consistent as the top performer of all of the cultivars in every year. Yield efficiency for 2010 
was likely low due to frost at bloom, but the increase in yield efficiency from 2009 to 2011 for all cultivars is encouraging because it shows all cultivars are increasing in yield over time even when accounting for increased tree growth. Overall, Orchard One has had some problems during this study. We've seen relatively small tree size, smaller than we would like to considering the age and planting system in the orchard. We've seen some poor tree health in some situations and poor fruit yield. Given that, Ginger Gold and Honeycrisp are performing better than Liberty, McCowan, and Zestar in terms of tree growth and fruit yield. And Ginger Gold's performance has been more consistent than Honeycrisp across the three years. Some of the possible reasons for the poor horticultural performance of the trees in this orchard might include rootstock. Budagowski 9 has been reported to have no negative attributes in 20 years of research in New England and on this site. However, this site has very sandy soils. We are growing the trees under organic conditions as compared to previous studies where we do not have the option for uh, increased nitrogen applications and other techniques that may have allowed the trees to grow better. And the trees are also subjected to lime sulfur and sulfur applications as part of their pest management complex. Lime sulfur and sulfur are used to manage apple scab. However, since the 1930s, there has been research that has shown a negative impact on total photosynthesis on the trees. We've also seen uh, literature that states that sulfur and lime sulfur can decrease fruit scent in the trees. In the kelp extract experiment, the majority of the horticultural parameters measured showed no significant impact from kelp extracts on tree growth, crop yield, or fruit quality, and the lack of effects, positive or negative, do not allow us to suggest their use uh, to improve the horticultural performance of these cultivars in this growing system. This concludes the second part of this presentation. Please continue on to part three where I will discuss our results from Orchard 2.